several of my friends made this really funny joke about my setup like I don't know how they come up with it, they're just so creative. They said that with the desk and the notes and everything, it looks like I'm a news presenter reporting news. And unrelated to that, I'm gonna try and do these videos differently. Before, it kinda does look like I'm reading from a teleprompter, but that's only because I wanted to get the point across in the shortest amount of time. I'm gonna try and record maximum two tries. And just to let you know, this is already my second time recording because the first time I had a piece of hair that was just like sticking out like this. And you know, that's what you get for having curly hair. So I am literally on my last try. If it turns out well, then good. If it's not gonna turn out well, then I guess I'm just gonna embarrass myself on the internet. For you, it means that you have to lower your expectations for this video. You're gonna have to pretend like I'm, I'm your best friend and we're sitting in the library it's like 11.30 p.m. and they're announcing over the telephone or whatever. Students, please GTFO, go get a life. It's literally going to be midnight. And then I just, I just start ranting at you. So this is the type of video it's gonna be. It's just me ranting now. All right, so now that that's out of the way, now we can continue. So this is the second part to upper division computer science classes at CSU East Bay. In part one, I talked about data structures and algorithms, programming language concepts, computer architecture, software engineering, automaton computation, and now I have four more classes to talk about. Let's talk about analysis of algorithms. This class is a very heavy theory class. Some of the homework assignments might be programming, but this is not going to be useless theory the way that automata and computations is. You should take data structures and algorithms, and then immediately the next semester, you should take analysis of algorithms. Exactly how in data structures, you're gonna learn how to do the programming portion of interviews. When you get to the part where you're talking to software engineers, they're gonna be like, thanks so much for writing this code and it totally runs well and everything, but can you think of a way that you could improve the efficiency of this code? In that moment, you're gonna be like, thank God for analysis of algorithms because you're gonna have to basically talk to them about the big O of your code, maybe talk about like how you can write it differently so that the space efficiency is better. So, overall, good theory not useless theory yay for that another thing about this class is in the beginning a lot of people me included i had this hesitation of writing code because i was like is this the smartest way of doing this is this piece of code like dumb am i being stupid by writing it like this so people who have started to code recently you always have to tell them that like dude it doesn't matter if it's the smartest code out there as long as it runs fine you don't have any bugs and it does whatever you want it to do, then it's fine. Basically, that hesitation gets addressed in this class because you get to learn about efficiency in terms of time and in terms of space. And that way you can be like, okay, so if I design my algorithm in this way versus this other way, it's going to save this amount of time and it's gonna have these implications on the space efficiency. Okay, I have a third thing to say about this class and I honestly don't know how important it is to anybody out there. In this class, you get to learn and study over the algorithms that all these like OG computer scientists wrote. Like it's very intricate, very elegant code for like searching and sorting. It will feel like how would I even think of writing that, but the point isn't to make you feel bad. The point is to just expose you to a smart way or someone else's smart code so that way it helps you learn. The dude that literally invented analysis of algorithms, Donald Knuth or Knuth, what is his name? On Wikipedia, his he's literally the father of the analysis of algorithms. I actually don't know how to say his name, so I'm gonna go to, on Lex's podcast. The following is a conversation with Donald Knuth, one of the greatest and most impactful computer scientists and mathematicians ever. Thank you. So, dude is still alive, he's super smart, him and everybody and all of his friends, probably, I don't know, all these other mathematicians who wrote these amazing ass algorithms, you have to learn them, you have to study them, is it going to be helpful to you in the long run? I don't know, but that was the third thing I wanted to say for this class. Now we can move on. Next class is operating systems, which is a very heavy theory class, but it shouldn't be like difficult theory, you know, not confusing theory. I would say this class kind of a little bit overlaps with the computer architecture class, like just in a tiniest bit, 
but I don't know if you're gonna take like operating system first or computer architecture first. Whichever one you take second, it'll feel like deja vu. Even though this is a theory class, the homework assignments will be about coding. You have control of which language you want to use for your program. Like let's say that the assignment is on multi-threading. If it's Python or C++, the teacher's probably gonna let you choose whichever one you want to do. My main takeaway from this class was learning about operating systems. Really, I'm not joking. Like, I learned about Linux through this class, I learned about Mac, and then I learned how much Windows sucks and exactly why Windows sucks. Next class is computer networks, which is, yet again, theory. Not confusing theory, kind of in the middle, like a moderate amount of like, okay, I might not even use this ever in my life, but it's good to know, that type of theory. The homework assignments will actually be in Python. You have to do socket programming, and for whatever reason, they chose Python as the language. Don't really have anything to say about this class, other than it's cool. Okay, here we are again at the end of the list. Statistics and probability for science and engineering. Will I say, last but not least for this class, no. This probably will be a good class to pair with your other hard classes because it's just stats. This is the book that you will be using. Genuinely, this is the only book I ever bought from the bookstore at East Bay. If you would like to purchase this from me, it is available for $20. Um, <laughs> every other class's book, I was able to honestly find it online. I'm just gonna say it because everybody does it, right? But for this class, for the homework, it's going to be online and you have to do all these exercises for like each chapter and whatever. Only reason why I have this book and I just, I just really upset about it. If you're one of those people that like, you have the same attitude towards statistics as you had towards like physics, which is like, why do we have to do this? I don't know. Honestly, like people, when they take upper division classes, I feel like none of us really know our direction. You know, like when I was taking these classes, I had no idea like what are my areas of interest. I was just like happy to be exposed to all these different things across the spectrum of computer science. On a general note, I think if you are interested in going through this long list of classes for upper division, congratulations to you. And really try to explore what it is that you do and don't like because this is your opportunity to get to know all the possible jobs that there are for you. You could be somebody that becomes just a vanilla software engineer or maybe you could become somebody who's really interested in theoretical computer science or you want to do you want to become a network engineer. All of those is possible just because they laid a foundation through this 27 units for you and you can go dig deeper if you would like to after this especially maybe through the breath coursework and electives. Which brings me to this point. Please subscribe to this channel. I still have so many classes to talk about. Like if you thought that CS is just this, oh my God, just level with me here. Subscribe to this channel, okay? Give it a, give it a thumbs up also. I try so hard. <laughs> Doing one take is like harder than you think. And I don't know why I put myself through this, but I guess that's just what bullying does to you. <laughs>